What's up guys, I'm Rich from Spray Black Studios and today I'm going to teach you how to paint up this AdMech model in the grimdark style using only Games Workshop products. No streaking grime, no oils or enamel washes in this video. So guys, one of the most common questions I get on my grimdark videos or on my social media posts is how to capture this grimdark feel without access to things like oil washes, enamel washes or inks. Now whilst these products do help considerably in achieving this feel and generally they're not that difficult to use once you get past that first hurdle of getting used to them, it is possible to do this sort of painting without access to all of these extra items. Well, this video is inspired by these questions and by the video done by our good friend, The Pickle Jar, last week as part of our Style Swap Challenge, where he attempted to paint up a grim dark salamander. And despite the fact that Pickle had no access to the streaking grime, oils or enamels that I love using, Actually, he did a really good attempt at it, and to be honest, using just Games Workshop products was pretty good. So today, I've prepped a model that for me fits pretty perfectly with the grimdark aesthetic, a Sakaran Infiltrator. A mix of man and machine, with a nice mix of material and mechanical parts, this model will give great opportunity to try out a few tricks to really capture that grimdark feel. So having prepped the miniature with a quick blast of Chaos Black Primer, I'm actually going to make a start with the material areas. Using the method that I made a video about a few weeks ago, I'm going to start off by painting the material areas with Corvus Black. This is more of a dark grey than an actual black, and will just help to drop the contrast a little when we come in to add in some washes. To give some quick and easy highlights, I'll grab out my trusty dry brush and some Dawnstone dry paint, and give all of the material areas a good going over. Once that dry brushing is all nice and dry, I'm going to darken these areas down a little. Firstly, using a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade. I love using a blue wash when it comes to painting black, as not only does it add a nice blue tint to those shadows, but it also helps to prevent it from reading more as a grey than a black colour. Once I've given this some time to dry, I'm also going to add a layer of Nuln Oil over the top just to darken it all down a bit more and get those shadows to really read as black. Now this material is usable, but I'd say it probably does look a little bit flat. So to make those highlights pop just a little bit more, I'll grab out the dry brush and the Dawnstone again, and this time give a very gentle dry brush over these areas. I'll be super conscious to make sure that the brush really has hardly any paint on it and I will do very, very gentle brush strokes. This material isn't entirely finished as I will need to go back in and add some dirt as a part of the weathering steps, but for now, we need to get on with adding in the other main areas. For the armor plates, I'm gonna go with the Mars Forge World color scheme. So I definitely want a nice solid red color, but unlike the Games Workshop box art, I'm going to be keeping a bit more on the darker side. Using a base coat of Gal Vorbach, I'm going to paint up all of those armoured areas such as the chest, the helmet and the backpack. Even though I do want to keep it darker, I do need to add some contrast to stop it from looking flat. And the first stage of this will be by pushing the brightness up just a little bit with some corn red. I'll pick out the main body of the armor plates, but just leave the Galvor back in the shadowed areas and the recesses. Once this is dried, I'm gonna pick up that Drakenhof nightshade again and give a simple recess shade to all of those red panels. The Drakenhof here will tie the reds in nicely with the black material we've already painted, but will also give quite a nice soft blue tinted shadow. For doing this, we are looking at bit more of a pin wash effect rather than just slavering it all over the panels. We just want it to sit in those recesses. With the main pieces of the armor plates done, I want to add in some battle damage. Using a fairly simple chip in effect, I'll pick out some of the edges and make a few scratches and scrapes using a bad and black. 
I'll try and pick out some of those areas that will most likely suffer from a bit of wear and tear. To give the impression that the scratches and chipping have gone through the paint layers and down to the metal below, a little bit of lead belcher added to the centre of each of these should do the trick. Now, as this is an Admech model, there are loads of metallic areas all over this guy. Whilst we have the lead belcher out, I'll give all of these areas a nice solid base coat. It's generally the metallics where a grimdark paint scheme can come into its own, and this guy is going to be no different. Once the base coat is dry, I'll then add a wash of everybody's favourite, Lone Oil. This is a job that I would normally use a black oil wash for, as I'll be honest, I love the look that the oils give, and the control that they give you to be able to manipulate and blend them is awesome. Known oil will, however, make an acceptable replacement on this occasion. Lay down a healthy coating, but try not to slop it on. It's here to provide some recessed shading and a little bit more definition to the metallics and not look like he's sprung an oil leak. Again, waiting for this wash to dry, I do need to add some highlights. With a nice small brush, I'll grab out the iron breaker and we'll add some highlights in a stippling manner to the upper areas of the metallics and to some of the edges of those areas. Now this step does take some time, but your patience in getting those highlights in the right places is definitely worth it. Again, at this point, there is a load of weathering steps to come, but before that, I want to get a bit more of the detail in place. For the accent areas on the metallics, I wanted a nice brassy color, but to be honest, I've often struggled to find a Citadel brass color that I really like. So instead, I'm going to cheat a little and I'll be starting off with a coat of Retributor Armour. This is a paint that is so bright and saturated in yellow that it definitely isn't a regular go-to paint when it comes to painting Grimdark. But when it is combined with a nice wash of Druki Violet, it does give a great brassy gold colour. I've used this for a few different projects before and to be honest, it's probably one of my favourite little combinations. Now all the base coats are in place and I would say that this guy is sitting at a pretty decent tabletop gaming standard. He isn't however looking all that grim dark yet, so it's time for the weathering to begin. Now since I'm just using Citadel paints, that means no streaking grime. It's really hard to achieve a similar effect using only acrylic paints, but with some watered down Typhus corrosion, we can get close. Unlike the streaking grime, once this is applied, you can't really do anything else with it. So I need to be really careful and deliberate in applying it only where I want that corrosion to sit. Picking out the underside of areas and those recesses, I want to show where the, all this dirt and grime is building up. I'll also add a little bit of this onto those armor plates and onto the material too. One of my other favorite things for weathering metals is a nice bit of patina. Patina is a buildup of oxidation over a long period of time, usually on brassy metals, but for our purposes on these miniatures, it's actually a superb way to bring in a few more interesting tones into these metallics. Using that nice small brush again, I'll apply some Nylac Oxide into all of those recesses and around the bolts and the joints. Try to be quite sparing when applying this though, as you really don't want it to be overpowering. Again, this step can take some time, but a bit of patience is definitely worth it. Thankfully, this is a video, so we can stick on fast forward. Now we can't really have weathered metallics with this much corrosion and muck without a spot of rust. Citadel do a great product in Rise of Rust for exactly this job, but although I very much rate it, I do often find that it's a bit too bright and being a dry paint is designed to pick out the raised areas, not the recesses, which is where that corrosion would usually occur. So my little trick that I use with this is to take the Rise of Rust, add in a little bit of water, and then a tiny bit of Rhinox Hide just to darken it all down a touch. This will then form almost a glaze consistency and applying this in a similar way to the Nylac Oxide will give me another nice tone in those metallics 
and also complements that greeny blues in the patina too. Now the bulk of the weathering is completed, but I do feel a bit of a compulsion to add some object source lighting and its overgrown cattle prod is a perfect place. Now as I've also banned myself from using the airbrush for this little challenge, it's time to grab out the dry brush again and using Calador Sky, I'll do a nice little dry brush to what looks like the coils and a tiny bit down the length of the weapon itself. I need to give it the effect of it glowing though, so add in some Ulthu and Grey into the Calador Sky, I'll then return and do another lighter dry brush layer. To really make it pop however, I need to build up the concentration where that light source is coming from. So grabbing out a nicely pointed brush, I'll add a stripe into that recess on the weapon and into the recesses on the power coil too. This will make it really look like it's glowing. Now I've added him to a nice Mars themed base, but we're not quite done yet. We need to make him look like he belongs on that base. You don't fight on an arid desert without collecting a bit of dust and a bit of dirt, so we need to add in some to fit in with this basin scheme. To prepare the area, I'm gonna use a little bit of Agrax Earthshade on the underside and the recesses, just to make it look a little bit more shadowed. And then since I can't use pigments, it's time to break the Citadel paints again. Pulling out the Martian Iron Earth texture paint that I used for this base, I'll again thin this down to more of a glazed texture and very carefully and sparingly apply this all around the recesses towards the lower parts of his legs. This will give the impression of some dust and some sand building up in these joints. To finish it off, we'll grab out our trusty dry brush again and give his feet and lower legs a super light dry brushing with the same Martian Iron Earth. And we're all done. So whilst it is difficult to get the same look without the oils, the enamels and the inks that I often use, I think with these techniques we can get a pretty good approximation. I'd say I'd be pretty happy to run an army painted in this way. Now this method is definitely easier when painting Admech as with all those metallic areas they do lend themselves really well for painting in the grimdark style. I would however say that this method could be twisted and used on different factions you just have to put a different emphasis on the weathering when it comes to it. For example, using typhus corrosion in the recesses and the joints on power armor, or on the materials on something like Gene Steeler Colt. Now, if you want to try this method, but you don't have some of the products that I've used in this video, then I have included my affiliate link for the awesome guys over at Firestorm Games down in the description below. Purchasing through this link will not only get you some Games Workshop stuff at a nice little discount, but it'll also help to support the channel as I will get a small kickback from Firestorm Games, which will allow me to spend on more fun stuff for the channel. If you do give this method a try, then please feel free to tag me on any posts on Twitter or Instagram. Again, both links can be found down in the description below. I would genuinely love to see what you guys come up with. So thanks for watching this video, guys. As always, if you've enjoyed this and you've taken some value out of it, then please hit that like button down below and please feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. You may have also noticed that shortly after my video with Pickle last week, I actually hit the thousand subscriber barrier. This is a massive and pretty humbling achievement for me. There are definitely way more of you guys enjoying my videos and enjoying the content than I thought was gonna happen. So for all you guys that are sub to the channel, I just wanna say a massive thank you. And if you are one of the 80.5% of people that are watching my videos without subscribing, then hit that big red subscribe button down below. That way you won't miss my future uploads. And remember guys, if all else fails, spray it chaos black and start again.